this is a lecture for my third hour class on the 5th of April. Okay, well, when we uh, left off, then we were about to talk about the Espionage Act. The thing that I've tried to tell you is that, uh, the thing that I've tried to tell you is that uh, civil liberties were restricted. You know, Americans have the notion that I'm an American and I can say anything I want, I can do anything I want. Uh, you know, I have the power to live absolutely free. You do not. People that say that, one thing you can tell about them is that they've never read the rule book called the Constitution. You can't do what you want to do. Uh, that's anarchy. Uh, if you live in a civilized culture, everybody has to give up a certain amount of their freedom so that the society can live peacefully. If we live in a society in which you could do anything you wanted, uh, you know, I could take, I don't know, uh, you know, a baseball bat if, it, if I was so inclined and go break out the, all the windshields in the parking lot. You can't do that. I can do it, but I'm going to be arrested and pay a penalty for it. You know, if I went to court, if I did something that ridiculous, I went to court and said, but your honor, I'm an American. I'm free. I can do what I want to do because that's what most Americans think. Uh, he would say, you're an American. You can't do what you want to do. And you're an idiot. You're going to jail, pal, and you're going to pay all those people back. So all of us to live in a civilized society give up a certain degree of freedom. That's why in this country you don't have freedom. I've spent 42 years trying to tell people that. When this mask thing came out, it just, uh, you know, I ground down what my molars just grinded my teeth together. People saying, well, you know, that you're infringing on my freedom, my freedom, my freedom. You've got liberty in this country, uh, not freedom. Uh, what is for liberty? Liberty is freedom restricted by law. That's what you've got. And you can't do whatever you want. If we lived in a, if, if we just had, a, if we, if we, if we just were all free, we could all do whatever we want. Do you want to live in a society like that? Think about it before you answer that. How old are you? Wouldn't you like to do whatever you want? Think about it before you answer yeah, it'd be chaos. It would be chaos. Yeah. Because guess what? She could do whatever she wanted. And she could, and she could, and he could. Yeah, everybody could. And it would be chaos. Yeah. So our freedom is restrained by law. I just want to pass that on to you. But anyway, and you know that without me telling you. A anyway, um, the um, uh, government passed a law early in the war called the Espionage. Have we written this down, the Espionage Act? Okay. So the government passed a law called the Espionage Act. And here it is. Uh, and look at this. Just read it silently. Did I read it to you yesterday? Did I read it to you yesterday? Did you note down, jot down some things about it? Okay. Well, I just want to move along here. The, the fact is, is that the government did not want anyone protesting against the war. The idea was we're at war. We all have to be on the same page. We all have to be united. And if you're not, you're un-American. And if you're un-American, we may deport you or we may put you in jail or we could put you in prison for 20 years or we could fine you $10,000. Uh, so the Espionage Act, uh, you couldn't criticize the Constitution. Do you have the right to criticize the Constitution? People do it all, but the people have criticized the Constitution before the ink was dry on the Constitution. We've done it for 240 years, almost. But they said you can't do that. Well, you can do it, but if you do it, you're going to pay a penalty. Uh, you couldn't criticize the government. What if we arrested, I probably said this yesterday, what if we arrested everybody in the United States this morning that criticized the government? You know, there's a lot of criticism going on about the government right now, because here in a few days, I'm going to pay my taxes, uh, along with the rest of the working United States. We're going to pay our taxes. If you want to be around and hear people say bad things about the government, well, just go down to H&R uh, uh, Block and stand by the door, and you'll hear people cursing and crying and pulling their hair when they come out. Uh, that's our national sport, criticizing the government. It always has been. It always has been. People have this notion that back, quote, in the old days, everybody, you know, supported the government. There was no argument. We were all one. Look, <clears throat> on one occasion, I'll just give you a quick, on one occasion when George Washington was president, when George Washington was president, uh, the French sent a new ambassador here and Washington didn't like the ambassador and he wasn't going to meet with the ambassador. The capital of the country uh, was Philadelphia in those days, and we didn't have a White House. It was just called the President's House, and 10,000 people gathered out 
in front of George Washington's house and said, essentially, if you don't accept that new French ambassador, we're going to pull you out of your house and drag you through the streets. That was George Washington. So the idea that disagreement and dissension and protest is somehow new in this horrible age in which we now live is just baloney. Protest, uh, disagreement, uh, criticism of the government of public officials, that's as American as apple pie. It's one of the things that we can do that are in a good part of the world, they can't. But in World War I, the government said, we're going to shut that down. And essentially, that's what the Espionage Act is all about, because they said all real, patriotic, red-blooded, true blue Americans will support the government and will support the war. Now, when the war is over, we can go back to our argument and protest, but not while the war is going on. And that's what the Espionage Act act is all about. Also, get this down. Wilson appointed this man, George Creel, George Creel, to uh, head uh, a committee called the Committee for Public Information. The Committee for Public Information. And of course, you know, this is, this was, you know, he was essentially in charge of America prop or America, American propaganda. In other words, the, the, the mission of this committee was to uh, make America look good, to whip up support for the war, to whip up enthusiasm, and to make the enemy look bad. America wasn't just fighting against Germany. The United States was fighting, along with its allies, to save civilization because the Germans were trying to destroy it. Uh, propaganda, okay? And uh, by the way, uh, George Creel, look, if this were 1918, I might be here lecturing and there would be a knock at the door and two guys would open the door, two guys in suits would come in and I'd say, can I help you? And they'd say, go ahead with your lecture. And they'd go stand at the back of the room. And when the bell rang, they would say, all of you young men, stay right where you are. Ladies, you can leave. Uh, and they would come around and say, show me some sort of, how old are you? Well, I'm 16. Show me some sort of identification that you're 16. Because if you were 18, what was the next thing they were going to ask you? You're in the war. Huh? You're in the war. No. <laughs> what, was, what were they going to ask you? To show them what? What? Show us your right things. You show, show us your, and if you couldn't show them your draft card, what might happen to you? Jail or a fine or some other thing. Yeah. In movie theaters, you would be watching the movie, and all of a sudden the reels would stop, the lights would come on, and people would just go, guys in suits from the crib, they would come running down both sides, and they would go through the audience, and they would check every male. Every person, every man uh, or boy there to uh, make sure they were uh, uh, signed up for the draft. And then the seventh inning stretch in baseball games, same thing. Uh, you know, and if you couldn't, they eject, took you out. I mean, they don't just throw you out the game. They take you someplace, and they're going to find out why. Because if you haven't signed up for the draft, you may not be a true red-blooded American. And if you're not a true red-blooded American, we don't want you in this this country. It's, it was a movement called the 100% Americanism movement. That's what's behind all of this. Did Listen. They let immigrants in? Huh? Did they still let immigrants in? Did they what? Let immigrants well, in? yeah, immigration is coming. Immigration is coming in. Uh, immigra immigration is coming. Get one pencil and go with that. Uh, if you're not, you're distracted. If you're distracted, you can't pay attention to what I'm saying. So pick one and go with that. Anyway, immigration is going to be restricted for the first time in the 1920s, okay, as a result of this. This, this country has just always been wide open, wide open. Not anymore. They're going, to restrict, they're going to restrict immigration for the first time in the 20s, okay, but they're starting to tighten down on it. And by the way, if you spoke with a foreign accent, uh, if you didn't speak the English language, you had problems in this country. Get this down. Uh, the government shut down newspapers. Some newspapers were courageous enough to, to, to oppose the war, and the government shut them down. By the way, that's a violation of which constitutional uh, right? Freedom of the press. Where do you find freedom of the press? First Amendment. Write this down. That's a violation of your First Amendment rights. So how did they get all these passed? Huh? Nobody's above the Constitution. How did they get it all I'm going to talk. To, I'm going to tell you that in just a minute. There's a, there, and, and this all results, what I'm telling you, all results in a very famous Supreme Court case. <laughs> and that will explain how they got away with this. Um, socialists and communists were thrown out of the country. Do you have a right to be a socialist? Mm -hmm. A communist? Mm -hmm. 
really? God, who am I in this room with? Socialists are going, socialists, you're a socialist, eh? Just admitted that. Somebody got that down. Call 911. <laughs> you, you have your draft card on you? You're, you're, you're going away a long time, pal. Anyway, you have a right to be a Nazi? You do. You know, there was a guy, did I tell you this the other day? There was a guy up in Washington State who got on the subway. Did I tell you that story? We're wearing a full Nazi uniform. I mean, he looked like Herman Gurry. He just got on a subway and all oh, they like cursed him and spit on him and you know attacked him. All these other you know good liberal broad minded Americans. Uh, is that a violation of his First Amendment rights? Yeah, it sure is. It sure is. As as despicable as the Nazis are, and a lot of other groups, you have the right to be in the Ku Klux Klan. You sure do. You sure do. You can't wear your hood in class. But you have the right to be in the Klan. You have, listen, if I can join the Republican Party, you can join the Klan or the Nazi Party or Socialist Party or Communist Party or any party you want. You can make up one if you want to. But not in World War I. Get this down. The German language was no longer taught in school or college. You couldn't take it. <clears throat> Government agents would attend church. And if the pastor mentioned, called Jesus the Prince of Peace, that pastor would might be arrested. You know, every Thursday in schools, they used to have sauerkraut. That's cabbage. And when you came on the campus, you could smell it all the way across the campus. That's the day that everybody went and ate somewhere in town. They had to change the name of sauerkraut on the school menus, okay? They had to call it Liberty Cabbage. Sauerkraut was too German. So they're By the way, uh, huh? They're doing a liberty of speech and not freedom of speech. Well, I don't even think they're doing really that much of a liberty of speech, but yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. Yeah, I see your point. Um, also, the hamburger was the number one snack food. Where do you think the hamburger came from? It came from Hamburg, Germany. I told you that the largest ethnic yeah. group in America was Germans, yeah. Germans, and they're getting on these ships in Hamburg, the seaport. Hamburg. They're going to they're come to the New World. And so, you know, some guys down there saying, gee, those guys might need a snack, you know. And so he just slaps meat between two pieces of bread and starts selling it from that. <laughs> I'm just giving you the short history of the hamburger. Yeah. 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 I thought it was weird. I was American. I'm sorry. What's American? Huh? What's American? Nothing. Uh, er, er, huh? Hot dogs? Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hot dogs aren't even like meat, though. What? Hot dogs are like a mixture of the leftovers of processed meat. Yeah, it's like not good. Unless you get them. Good. Yeah, you don't want to watch. You don't want to watch hot dogs or sausage being made. You just want to yeah. eat. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, back to the point. Uh, they couldn't call them hamburgers. You could sell them, but you couldn't call them. So, so you had to you had to start calling them Salisbury steaks. That's what, <laughs> that's what the hamburger became for a year, and because because we were fighting. You know, England was our ally, and there's a big plain in southern England called uh, Salisbury. You've heard of the Stonehenge? Oh, yeah. yeah, well, that's where it is. I've had you follow it. It's just this big, long plain. It's called the Salisbury Plain. So we had to name it after. It had to name it something British. Don't laugh at your ancient ancestors because just a few years, just a few years ago, we went to war in Iraq and we wanted to fly across French airspace so we could get there quicker with our bombers leaving out of England. And the French said, nope, you can't do it. And boy, that ticked us off. I mean, we said to France, hey, we saved your tails in World War I. You know, you'd be celebrating history of Hitler's birthday if it wasn't for World War II, and you're not going to let us fly across your sneaking airspace. Well, up in the Congress, there's a congressional uh, cafeteria where all the senators and representatives eat. And on the menu, on the menu, they changed French fries to freedom fries. <laughs> we'll show the French. You know, we'll, we, you know, we, won't name, we won't name our fried potatoes that are clogging our arteries with cholesterol to kill us all when we're 50. We'll just call those freedom fries, and we did. So the more we change, the more we stay the same. Also, also get this down. Uh, German music was banned. What am I talking about? Oh, my God. What, are you, what am I talking about? German music. Am I talking about a German rapper named Adolf? <laughs> What am I talking about? German music? No, that's that's the Irish, the <laughs> Scottish. Sorry. What am I talking about? German music. Mm. What? You should. 
Bach. Uh, classic. Yeah, classical. Johann Sebastian Bach. Mm -hmm. Beethoven. Uh, uh, Bach. Yes, he was German. A little rascal. He was also deaf. Beethoven was deaf. He cut the legs off of his piano. Well, he wasn't born deaf. He, he got a, some sort of disease and he went deaf when he was 20. But uh, he cut the legs off of his piano so it would be close to the floor and he would lay down and he would hit the keys with his ear pressed to the floor so he could uh, 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 get the vib vib vibrations and he wrote some of the most beautiful music in the history of the world. So the next time, you know, your battery's dead in the morning, don't crawl on top of the gym about to jump because you've just been overwhelmed by your problems. <laughs> just think of Beethoven. And he wrote some of the greatest music in the history of the world. Wagner, Beethoven, Bach. You couldn't hear it in this country. You couldn't hear it. How many of you have heard Wagner, Beethoven, or Bach? Good. What did you hear? You remember? You just heard it. Just somebody glanced up. What did you hear? Oh, I was in band. So yeah, was in band. Well, good. Good for you. Good for you. Because I'm going to play you a little Beethoven right now. Beautiful music. Let me tell you something. Are you going to sing? Huh? I thought you were going to sing. I thought you were going to sing or something like that. Well, I brought my banjo. And I'm going to... <laughs> no, I'm not going to play it. Okay, I'm going to be impressed. Put your head down. You oh. it <laughs> uh, this was all written two or three hundred years ago. It will be listen, people will be listening to it two, two or three hundred years from now. If you think that people are going to be listening to rap music 300 years from today, you are sadly mistaken. And you don't think I know anything about rap music, do you? I can prove that wrong with one word. Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? I don't even know what the hell that is. <laughs> a few years ago, a few years ago, I was given this lecture, and somebody said, "No, Mr. Thompson, do you listen to Tiger? 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 Is it Tiger?" And I said, "Oh yeah, all the time." Oh, that's not. So I, I don't even know what is it. Is, is, is it a, a rapper? Yeah. Oh, he. Yeah. Well, so if he walked in here right now, I'd say, "Well, have a seat." Uh, I wouldn't know who it was. Tiger. Is he still singing? The music? Yeah. Yeah, well, they're going to be listening to him 300 years from today. And I'll tell you what, if you think they're going to be, if you think 300 years from today, they're going to be listening to somebody wearing a hat that six of us can stand under and, and, get, and stay dry in a rainstorm, and they're twanging on a guitar, singing through their nose, going, well, Ma ran away with the hired hand, and Pa jumped down the well. Uh, you're wrong there, too. But they're going to listen, be listening to Bach and Beethoven, these classicists. Their music is immortal. So now I'm going to, I'm going to play you a little bit of that. And I don't want you doing anything. I don't, well, you don't even listen to it, so you don't even know. That's like saying, you know, I don't like Paris. Have you ever been there? Well, no, I've never, but I don't like it. So uh, point well taken. Anyway, put everything aside and just listen. I assure you it won't kill you. You might even like it. Beautiful, beautiful. This is from his, this is from Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. Uh, you know, symphonies are written in four parts. Uh, this is the second part of the seventh symphony. Okay. 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 And this is not a break. This is class. So, you know, uh, everything we do in here is to advance your education. Uh, and I'll tell you this, education, educated people know who Bach and Beethoven are. Uh, they know the arts. They know the great pieces of art. Uh, if you get a diploma, you know, you can get diplomas, you can get uh, college degrees till the cows come home. And if you don't know who these people are, you're as uneducated as a post. That's a fact. That's not an opinion. So, here we go. And I, I also know that I deal with people who say, well, I'm just here to get a high school diploma and then I'm going to go out and conquer the world. Well, good for you. Go with a little bit of Beethoven. <laughs>
States. What a loss for four years. Um, also, um, on one occasion, just to give you an example of how strict the government was on any sort of dissent during the war, uh, one occasion the director of the Boston Philharmonic Orchestra was about to direct the concert, and government agents met him at the stage. This is at a concert, and they told him at the end of the concert, we want you to play the national anthem. And he refused. He said, no, I'm not going to play the national anthem. They arrested him, took him to jail right then and there. That sort of reminds me of this uh, uh, college, uh, Colin Kaepernick. I don't watch pro balls. That how you pronounce yeah. his name, Kaepernick. Uh, you know, he's, he's had some uh, difficulty in his career. It's not the government doing it, but he's had some difficulty in his career because on occasion he refused to uh, stand when they played the national anthem before before the games, okay? So, anyway, the um, government cracks down on uh, any sort of dissent during the war. Also, get this down. There was a socialist uprising in the United States. A group of socialists got together, and they said, we're going to march to Washington, D.C. You probably remember this from your Oklahoma history. The only socialist uprising... And by uprising, I mean attempt to overthrow the government. The only socialist uprising in American history took place right here in Oklahoma. In fact, right around Dewar and Henrietta and right on down here to Eufaula in the other direction all the way to Norman. But get this down. A group of Native Americans and uh, African Americans and white uh, Americans who were young farmers here in central Oklahoma got their draft notices, get this down. They were poor sharecroppers. They were working their fingers to the bone. They never would have the chance to own the land they were working. They and their families were living in, regardless of how hard they worked, they and their families were uh, living in flea-infested shacks. Uh, and they decided, they decided to rise up and overthrow the government. They thought that in Oklahoma, if these socialists armed themselves, get this down, if they got their guns, and started marching to Washington, and there are about a thousand of these guys. Write that down, right here in central Oklahoma, right here in the middle of this red, red Republican state. They thought if they started marching toward Washington, D.C., that socialists all over the country would rise up and join them, and they would overthrow the government, institute a socialist economic system, in other words, redistribute the wealth of this country, and mainly stop the war. And the reason it's called the Green Corn Rebellion is because, you know, when these guys get together right over here in Henrietta, when these guys got together to start planning this thing, someone raised the question, uh, what are we going to eat on our way to Washington, D.C.? And they said, well, we'll just steal corn uh, out of cornfields as we're going up to Washington to overthrow the government. The problem was is that the corn was green. It wasn't yet mature. And if this thing had gotten off the ground and they'd eaten that, about the only thing they would have gotten was a severe case of the diarrhea. So anyway, uh, they started. Uh, they, you know, the signal was given and they rise up, get this down, they rise up, but there was an informer. There was a guy inside the ranks. There was an informer. A government agent was, you know, pretending to be one of these socialists and he had been relaying their plans. He had been relaying their plans to, uh, to uh, rise up and the government was ready for them. They had soldiers, National Guardsmen from Oklahoma. They had uh, sheriffs sheriffs and sheriff deputies and in a matter of hours when these guys rose up they were uh, arrested three of them were killed some of them shot it out three of them were killed 450 were arrested 86 were sent to prison from one to ten for one to ten years okay one to ten years if you look 
at the original Oklahoma flag, and I don't know what I've done with it, but if you look at the original Oklahoma flag, there it is. That's our original state flag. Uh, well, I guess the bell has rung. I will, um, I will start there tomorrow during the lecture and uh, watch the lecture tomorrow because you'll be responsible for it. And again, hold it. If you've got a test to make up, uh, I said that Wednesday was the deadline. Uh, we're not going to be here Wednesday, so Thursday. But get it done by Thursday if you have a test to make up. If you uh, missed a test, yeah, don't. Yeah, be fine with me. How many times you want to. Just get it done by this week, by Thursday.